Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa here. I know it has been a month since I made a long form video. <laughs> Yikes. Um, I have been making shorts, but a long form video I haven't made in a month. So I'm very, very sorry, but we're back. And from you can see from the title, we are talking about imposter syndrome or it's like fraud syndrome and what that feels like and how it's appeared in my life like this past uh, weekend. One sec, I need to turn my AC. Okay, so um, first of all, let me tell you guys why I was missing for a little bit of time. So my birthday had passed. I had a beautiful time, got really amazing gifts. Um, all my friends came out like the whole weekend to celebrate me, which was very, very sweet. Um, and then also I bought a new car this past weekend. Well, I bought it on Friday. I was so happy. Um, it's a 2024 uh, Lexus. I'm not going to say exactly like what, you know, the, the make and model and all that. Like, well, the, you know the make. I'm not going to tell you guys the model. But this is why the whole imposter syndrome thing showed up in my weekend is because just for context, now I'll tell you guys what I was driving before because, um, you know, I don't have the other car anymore, but I was driving a honda civic which i love honda honestly before i got the lexus i was going to go um and get a 2024 honda accord even though i don't like the the new body of the honda like the front i really don't like it but i'm a honda girl my grandma had a honda um and she and then after her old honda had you know died out you know honda's run for 300,000 miles she got another honda like also was honda growing up so i was i was gonna get another honda but this week when I started doing my car purchase process, um, I was just like, why not go for the Lexus? Like, um, granted, I don't, I, I knew what I wanted my, 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 I haven't had a car payment in 10 years. My Honda was paid off. I paid it off within like two years of when I, when I had got it. And, um, I didn't know if I really wanted a car payment, but then I was like, okay, you know, I'm making, you know, good amount of money. I know I can manage this much of a car payment, yada, yada. So when I finally got my car, um, there was just a wave of emotions that came over me. Gratitude, I was happy. I prayed after, after and before I got the car, but during the process of buying my car, it was so seamless that I was like, and I don't talk about, you know, religion and spirituality or, or anything really on my channel that is like that. Cause I feel like people love to push their own opinions and stuff about it on, on you. And it gets a little intense. But the way that my car buying process was so seamless, I was like only God could have possibly had his hands on that process and guided me through that because it was like the car was meant to be mine. It was just so seamless. Everything went perfectly great. Um, I had an amazing dealer. I worked at a great dealership. Everything was smooth. But even so, there was like doubt that like kind of went in waves for me where I was like, oh my goodness, like, what if this happens? What if this happens? You know, now it's a, it's a brand new car. What if there were so many, what ifs I had to sit back and really like think of where that was coming from. And what's so funny is that two years ago, I started working at a new company and I started making double what I was making at the previous company that I was with for six years. And I knew that that previous company that I was with for six years, I deserved more money. The, the job that I was doing, I was like, I deserve minimum well I won't say the amount but I was like I deserve a lot more money I'm doing a lot more work um this is not this is not going to first of all I was like this is never going to take me to the lifestyle that I think I deserve or I envision for myself and also um there's no movement in this role or at this company I can't move any further than where I was at so I knew that I needed to leave but fear literally was coming at me in waves I was like what if I start a new company I get fired in a week what if um my new company my manager is a bitch or what if he's an asshole i was like what if my new team they suck like there were so many what ifs and it was nothing but fear nothing but fear based just waving over me and now here we are two and a half years later and i'm still at the new company my team is amazing my manager is really chef's kid she really wants me to see me succeed um and it's it's nothing bad happened nothing bad happened and it's so funny because when i had got my job the, the the new one i was also shifting my career too when i shifted into this new career i had talked about imposter syndrome about two and a half years ago it was on like my instagram story i mentioned it and i was like it's so crazy like i have worked so hard to get to this point to be making this kind of money and a little piece of me still feels like uh you didn't put in enough work or uh 
it's not going to work out because you should not be here. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be making this money. You shouldn't be in this role. You should have never shifted your career. You're going to fuck up somebody else's shit. Like it, that really did play in my head. And then this past weekend, it played again with, with my new car. You shouldn't have this car. You don't, you don't deserve it. But I also have to, it's almost like the funniest thing about like feeling waves of self doubt and feeling like you shouldn't have something or you shouldn't be it's <laughs> sorry, my, my camera went so bright. It feel like you shouldn't, you don't deserve these things is that you have to then in turn sit there like hype yourself up. And sometimes for some people, it's a little bit hard to hype yourself up because you feel like you're being conceited, which as I got older, I had to realize that being conceited is not a bad thing. It's only bad when you're like being conceited to the point where you're like trying to compete with other people. That's when it gets weird where it's like, do you, are you happy with yourself? Like, do you actually believe that you're, you're that bitch or are you trying to prove to other people? And I've never been the kind of person where I'm trying to prove I'm that girl to other people. I'm always proving to myself that I'm, I'm that bitch. Like, you work this fucking hard to be here. Nothing in my life was a handout. Like, I want, I, I need people to understand. Like, I, I don't talk about my childhood um, often. I probably have in a video on here because I'm way more open on my YouTube channel. I have all this time to just talk. Um, I grew up in a level of poverty. Both of my parents, I, I mentioned this in a different video, both of them have went to prison. Um, my, my grandma raised me and my siblings. It was rough. Like we didn't grow up with silver spoons in our mouth. We didn't grow up in the suburbs. I legitimately grew up in the hood. Like hood setting, you know, had a ball. Like I didn't realize I was in poverty, honestly, because my grandma hit it pretty well. Um, never, honestly, like that's why I said we grew up in a level of poverty because my grandma made sure we never missed a meal. We always had shoes on our feet. But sometimes we went to the Salvation Army to get those shoes. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I said there was there was a, a level to it. It was still poverty. You know, it still is what it is. Um, and I just know that sometimes maybe that little girl who grew up in that circumstance can't conceptualize how the adult her is now allowed to be in a different circumstance. And granted, listen, I pray every night, every morning, before I go to bed, when I wake up, I have my own personal prayer and hard times can fall on anybody. Trust me. I, I'm never feeling like, you know, I'm that bitch. And you know, I'm, th this, this is why I would never dog out somebody else's situation because it can always be you. <laughs> it can always be you. And also it's just not right. Like it's, it's weird. Um, and we've all been on hard times, you know, but I know that the same way that I was poverty stricken as a child, I don't, I, the future is so unpredictable. As I always say in other videos, the next moment isn't promised to anybody, the next millisecond. Um, but you being in this same situation that you're in today, it's not as secure as a lot of us think it is. Shit, the economy went fucking haywire after we all know what happened in 2020. And it's actually really crazy how a lot of my friends, like a lot of us are, a lot of my friends' jobs were lost. A lot of people were receiving, um, what is it, uh, unemployment checks. Like a lot of people's lives got turned upside down. I, I gratefully, my job, all they did was set this home. We just started working from home full time. My current job that I moved over to working from home full time off the rip. But that's why I'm saying like poverty can hit any of us. A lot of people don't even have a thousand dollars saving their bank account. There's a lot of influencers that I was like on TikTok. I know I, you guys know I go up on tangents a lot, but there was a girl who she's an influencer and she's been an influencer for years and people were kind of like doing a deep dive into her personal life, but they realized that she was like homeless and they were like, how could she be homeless since she's been an influencer for so many years? The amount of people, this is why I'll be telling y'all to go into TikTok lives. There are so many TikTok creators who have a million followers on TikTok, but if you watch any of their lives, they're literally crowdfunding because they have no money. Influencing is lucrative, but a lot of people do not make money from being an influencer. I make some money, but let me just be very unbelievably clear. My career pays my bills. That's why I always say I would never leave my career. Influencing is so unpredictable, super unpredictable. But I, I also encourage everybody to jump into it and go for it too, because you can make you can make money, but just understand that a lot of influencers are not getting paid and especially not from the app. If you're not seeing them really getting brand deals, I don't know how much money they're probably making. I, 
just being honest. But yeah, like, I have to like sit with myself and remind myself that I have came a very long way. Granted, there's a lot of people who helped me along the way. I would, I would never downplay the amount of like support I have. I have a bomb ass support system. And one thing that I know for a fact, there's certain things that you, I'm like, well, you don't know that for a fact. One thing I know for an absolute fact, if I fell on my face today, I know that I can go straight back home and go right back to my support system tomorrow, seamlessly. So I am blessed to have a support system that I know that a lot of other people don't. So I know that I have this safety net that's literally, you know, that's literally there for me. I mean, there's a safety nets here too, but in North Carolina, but um, mostly I think about my safety net <laughs> back home. But it's okay to sit with yourself or remind yourself how far you have came. Imposter syndrome literally wants to keep you where you were back in the past. It wants to keep you in the struggle. It wants to remind you of when you didn't feel so confident, when you weren't confident in your career, when you were back at that old job, when you had that horrible team, when you were with that ex who fucking sucked and y'all was both broke or you were paying his bills or I don't know why you were doing that. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at. It wants to keep you in the past. And the past can be a bit of a scary place. Like it, there's many great memories, but there's also, you know, if you're like me, like I said, I grew up in a level of poverty, a lot of things happen. It can be a scary place, but it can also really keep you trapped. And really, it, it's it's like imposter syndrome to me is like jumping over like hurdles that don't that are not physically there. Well, sometimes they possibly can be, but what I'm saying is that we are all worthy of the lifestyle, the career, the job, the career, the the car, the man, the, the we're all deserving of the lifestyle that we envision for ourselves. And it is okay to hype yourself up. It's okay to tell you that you're that bitch or you're, or you're that man. It's okay to tell yourself that. Don't let society think that, you know, oh, if you, if you talk highly about yourself, then you're being conceited. In my opinion, talking highly about yourself, writing yourself notes, because I don't know if I told you guys this, but me and my, me, me and my best friend had wrote each other letters in the beginning of the year of things that we want to accomplish um, for 2024. And a lot of that was just like, telling myself that like you're that girl basically and i wrote down a list of things i want to accomplish but also like being kind to myself because honestly being conceited or being like really into yourself i think it's only like a negative when it's like you're you're trying to do it to prove something to somebody else when i'm talking nicely and kindly to myself and reminding myself of how far i've come that's totally okay and i think we should really do it more often um honestly because I feel like a lot of us don't do it enough like we really don't do it enough but I don't know guys like I, I felt like this needed to be a conversation because I have literally had this feeling when I bought my car this past weekend and it's just like also on the on the flip side somebody very close to me back home had all these reservations and was just like why would you buy such a flashy car my child I don't think the car is flashy I really don't but they're like why would you buy such a flashy car what if somebody does this what if this happens what if that what if that happens and I I had to end the conversation and I told them respectfully, um, I can't live my life like that. Because if, if I'm living my life to think what if somebody was to break into my apartment because I upgraded from my last apartment, well what, if, well, what the fuck's the point of leaving my damn house? What if somebody just takes me all together? God forbid. Like you cannot live your life scared. Because here's the thing, we're all going in the dirt or we're all, whichever way you want to go, the end will come at some point. The end is gonna come. You, we, you can't take it with you. I'm not saying live your life and do things that's gonna put you in financial restraint or financial ruin. I'm not telling you to go out and buy a fucking, a G-Wagon that you can't afford. I'm not telling you to do that. But what I am telling you is, bitch, have a ball. Enjoy this time while you have it. Have a good time. And what, what's that saying? Um, enjoy the fruits of your labor. You think I, I worked this fucking hard and I'm, I'm, I'm making my money and doing all this shit to not enjoy it? What kind of life is that? So, anywho guys, this is just for my people who are out there self doubting themselves, feeling like they don't deserve the things that they've worked so hard for. You deserve it. Go out, have a fucking ball, and, and live, live your best fucking life, period. But that's the end of today's video. I promise I'm going to come back weekly. Pinky promise, guys. Put your pinky to the camera.
I promise. Um, but I love you guys so much. Make sure you drop a comment. Tell me about your experience with imposter syndrome or fraud syndrome. Um, I haven't been like diagnosed. Of course, I'm self-diagnosing myself. It's really just self-doubt, honestly, if I had to put it in words. But tell me about your experience. Drop a comment. Like this video. Share it. Um, and yeah, just let's have a discussion. But I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.